Okay, so before I install the clutch basket assembly on the other side, because there's a push rod uh, that goes through the center here, you can kind of see this on the diagram. Um, basically, what I want to make sure I do first is install the push rod assembly, or the, I guess as here in the book, it's called the push lever assembly. So I'm going to go ahead and take this seal and I'm actually going to lube it up just barely with some assembly lube and then we'll get that installed in the crankcase. As far as the push lever assembly goes, put this washer on first. The washer sits right on top of the seal. Okay, that's gonna go down in there. And then essentially, it should be, so I've got to turn the spring a little bit because the spring should be locked on, I'm gonna lift this up. The spring should be locked on one side. Okay, there we go. That's why this is easier to do before you install the clutch basket. So basically you have one edge hook hanging on this side and then the other hook goes down inside the crankcase like that. Okay, now you've got a nice sealed but lubed up clutch lever assembly. Okay, then the set screw. So on the set screw, there's a little gasket. That's what uh, this is on the diagram. So there's a, there's a little groove on, I'll go back here a little bit and I'll highlight this, but there's a little gro uh, groove that this seats into. And all it does is it goes in just far enough to keep this from lifting up. All right, now I'm gonna flip it back around. First, it's gonna go on. I'm gonna lube up this shaft just a little bit. I'm gonna put some on the back of this washer as well. Okay, so spacer first, slash washer. Okay, then there is another spacer, number 17 spacer. It's gonna go on next. Okay, move that around really good, get that lubed up. Okay, then the clutch basket goes on. Okay, and then that actually locks into those gears on the back, or you can see it, it locks into this uh, main drive gear. Then there is an in-between spacer. Lube that up really good. spacer and then we have the uh, front basket that's gonna go on you can see I've got a nice flush meet with the inner basket and the end of the, uh, the teeth so from there I need to start installing cushion friction plate clutch plate so actually, pause that. I'm actually going to secure the inner basket first. From here, now the this tab on this washer is gonna go right in that groove right there. Okay, and then we're gonna put the nut on. Okay, so I got my 22 socket ready, but in the, in the, in the time that it took for me to disassemble this engine. It's been a couple of weeks waiting for parts and all that. So I just went ahead and decided to order this. Uh, I think I got this off Amazon. I'll just show you the, uh, this, the item that I bought. But essentially I'm just gonna, just with the clutch out, and this is why I didn't put the clutch plates in. This is why I, I kind of rethought that is, this just goes right in there. And then I will, just grab that, pretty simple. Now I can hold this while I torque this nut. Okay, so according to the service manual, this needs to be torqued to 36 foot pounds, which again, my torque wrench is in inch pounds, so multiply that by 12, so 432 inch pounds. So I'm just gonna hold that. Let's start torquing this down. six foot pounds. That's 
see now I've just got to get this washer bent up again so, okay uh, looking at the, the the different friction plates um, according to the service manual new ones are three millimeters wide the wear limit is 2.7 millimeters and basically what they say is is measure at you know three or four points along each plate each in plate individually, and if any one of them it falls below the wear limit, it's advisable to replace the entire set, according to the service manual. So I've already actually gone through and measured each of these friction plates, and not one of them is even close to the wear, the wear limit. But on some of these, I did notice there is some cracking, and there is some areas where you can kind of see a little bit of heat damage, like where some chunks have, have been removed. Um, so what I'm going to, and not to mention the fact that I don't know how old this clutch is. This thing could be 10 years old, I, you know, as far as I know, it could be as old as the motorcycle. I doubt it, but it's possible. Uh, I don't have any history on the motorcycle. I don't know if the prior owner had cared to replace them, but, um, uh, on one of these clutch plates, um, I've, or uh, at least two of them, I noticed some cracking and whatnot. So regardless of that, I ordered... Uh, new clutch plates off of eBay. And so I'm just going to put those in. But in any case, when, that's the inspection is uh, three millimeters, measure at three to four points. And if any one of those fall below, then just go ahead and just buy a set. I think I got uh, the, the clutch plates for like 20 bucks. I'll show you my eBay store link description that I, that I, my actual purchase. Uh, I'll flash that on the screen here. Okay, so friction plates are a thing of the past. Now, it does not have necessarily a thickness for uh, the clutch plates themselves. What it does tell you is to lay each one on a flat piece of glass and then use a feeler gauge of uh, five millimeters and, or point, sorry, five thousandths of an inch, not five millimeters, five thousandths of an inch, so 0 0.005 millimeters. And if there's warpage, if if it bends up at any point, you know, in excess of five thousandths of an inch, then it's warped and has heat damage or something and needs to be replaced. So um, these ones are okay. Uh, there's no, again, I'm surprised there's no thickness uh, test that you can do on these. I guess you can just kind of look at each one individually and see if there's any serious wear marks. But so I've decided I'm actually going to keep uh, the the clutch plates. I can move on to measuring the springs, the tension springs. And in the service manual, the, the a new spring should be about 33 millimeters uh, in a resting position. And a minimum is 32 millimeters. So you can see that I'm at, you know, I don't know, it's a spring, so there's 32.05, something like that. Uh, so I've already tested all these and all of them, you know, ended up being okay. Uh, some of them are right at, you know, the, the service limitation and I might just remember that, but I didn't order any new springs. Okay, so the next one is the push rod. So this one has a roll test that you, you, you roll on the table and basically it just wants to know if it's warped, curved or flat. So if it rolls... Put it on a piece of glass or a, a stone countertop or something. And if you don't see it wobble when you roll it, I guess that's the test there. So I am ready to go ahead and start installing uh, a cushion is going to go on first and then uh, a friction and then a clutch plate and then a friction plate. And then we're going to repeat in that order. My first uh, order of business here with the clutch is I'm going to make sure I just kind of get everything uh, oiled up just a little bit. Here, I've got some 5W20. We just want to put it together having a little bit of you know coated uh, material friction plate sorry if i use those it change terms interchangeably please forgive me the uh, fiber materials are the friction plates and the steel plates are the clutch plates so it's like um it's like i'm battering some chicken wings or something right now. I'm just coating both sides really good with a little bit of oil. And All right, so we start out with a cushion. I'll 
cushion ring. And I do want to make sure that it doesn't get all twisted up. So you got to look at it all the way around. Okay, and once that's on, it goes cushion ring, friction plate. And then you take a clutch plate. Now, the clutch plates have this little notch on the top of it. And basically, according to the, the service manual, you basically are going to take those and go 90 degrees each plate. So now I've completed one full set of cushion ring friction plate clutch plate. Now it's time for cushion ring Dad? what babe Where's mom? inside okay and then we do another friction plate and then we'll do another clutch plate but this time I'm going to offset this by 90 degrees from the top one we're set in there really good Okay, cushion ring. Okay. And then I got a ton of oil dripping out of there, so I've got a rag here catching that excess. Okay, now the cover, uh, cover plate can go on with this threaded rod already in there so I'm already I've already got it screwed on to the other side and then well, I'll do my adjustments later oh don't forget before you do that you've got your push rod and then you've got your ball bearing so do not forget these so I've got my push rod oops excuse me yep the push rod is going to contact the clutch lever assembly directly. I'm just going to use this to push that in there. Okay, then the ball bearing goes between this rod and the rod that I just slid in there. So now the ball bearing, I'll, I'm actually going to put some uh, assembly lube on it so that it kind of sticks in there. Okay, so now the ball bearing's in there and now this plate can go in there. There we go. All right, springs. And again, I'm going to worry about adjusting these later. There we go. I'm actually going to just use my impact driver to drive these in just so it's quick. It's an eight millimeter socket. It's starting to squeeze out a lot of that oil. Now it's under under pressure okay so i couldn't find any torque specs uh for these and so for an eight millimeter bolt i'm just going to do something like five foot pounds or nothing nothing too crazy okay so now i can just test the clutch assembly so i'll just test my free play here and then i'm actually going to take this and just force it and you can kind of see the clutch start to expand so I'll deal with these adjustments a little bit later. Um, in fact, I'm going to find a place in the service manual that, you know, give us, gives us what the recommended uh, procedure is after replacing the friction plates. Because I imagine it's going to be, you know, we'll be adjusting this nut to some degree. And then there's probably a, like a free play specification of to like where this should be pointing. So, so for right now... This side of the crankcase, absent the gasket and the cover, this side of the crankcase is, has, is now reassembled. I'm going to go through the diagrams one more time and make sure that I don't, and on my workbench here, make sure I don't have any extra parts that uh, I need to be concerned about. So here I do have a dowel pin. I'm just going to put this in. Okay. 
And then I've got another dowel pin that should be sitting right here. But I believe that that is already in the case, which it is. So I'm already, it's already in the case side. So I don't need to worry about that one. 